Hulk it up, Horton. Oh! Yeah! Deep breath. Count me back. Five, Five four. four. My thumbs don't normally do that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm good. Hit it. Bang! Welcome to Power Up with me, Tony Horton. Now, you know me from the Power of Four and my supplement line, Power Life. Now, usually on this show, I am putting a guest through their paces, but today, today is a very special episode because our athlete today has created this powerful workout and I cannot wait to do it with him. Now, I want to introduce to you my guest. He is a WWE Hall of Famer, a three-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion, Tag Team Champion, U.S. Champion, so many titles. He is the founder of DDP Yoga and, of course, master of the Diamond Cutter. Please welcome Diamond Dallas Payne! Bang! Oh, my, my brother! Man. Come on, mm. brother! I cannot tell you, my friend, <laughs> how awesome it is to have you here today. This is a real treat to have you at my home. I'm slightly nervous because you're, <laughs> you're actually much cooler than I am. So, dude, dude stop I, it! Stop I can't it, man. wait to get after it today. I I'm just happy to be here and uh, do the show with you, man. I'm all about that power life, too, bro. Well, thank you, man. We had a nice conversation about it earlier, and I think it's going to do some real wonders for you, man, honestly. Oh, it's you know healthy, I mean? and that's what I'm all about. Well, it helps these grow. That's which, right. And by the way, what, Bang, what you're going to do today with me is so unusual. Can you talk about that a little bit? What, well, what? A lot of people call DDP yoga. They'll say, oh, man, I love your yoga. It just happens all the time. Right, right. Where someone will come up and go, oh, my God, DDP, I love your yoga. And anybody who's with me goes, ooh, not good. <laughs> Because they know. Why? And, and, wow. I look, and I look at him, I go, what'd you call it? He goes, your yoga, man. I lost like 40 pounds with your yoga. I go, what did you call it? And I get right in your face, what did get you call right. it? Get it right. DDP, yeah. DDP, yeah. DDP, yeah. I'm good with DDP yoga. But DDP yoga or DDP Y, the main reason I'm going that route is because I want people to stop calling it just yoga because it's not it's yoga it's rehab it's old school calisthenics mm. done with a slow burn movement it's dynamic resisting engaging and flexing as you're moving as if you're a bodybuilder as if you are weightlifting mm. with no weight and then i add the extra stuff on it which is my my jack straps my the, the blood flow restriction bands well the beautiful thing is here you are you know creating all this you know, increase strength and, and, and uh, size and muscles without, a lot of people can't lift dumbbells, you know what I mean? They can't, they, get, they have to pick them up, they gotta get them in place, and then when they're, they're done with their, few, you know, their last couple of reps, they can't put them down, and that's where they get hurt sometimes. And, and a lot of people, like, we're lucky that at our age that we can actually do the things that we can do, but most guys who used to lift heavy, they can't anymore. They're broken. And they can't broken. get that, they can't get that rush, that pump. Mm. Like that's a that's a, a bicep and tricep mm. that doesn't mm. lift weights. Right. And that's the beauty. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. You know, because as you get older, I, this is my big thing, all right? How many times have you left the gym, like when you were lifting weights all the time? Oh God, oh. I did my shoulder, or my back, or my knee, mm. or my mm. pec. I have never got off that mat and said to myself, boy, I wish I didn't do that. Right. You know what I mean? Right, and I right, walked right, out of that right. gym going, why did I do that? You know? Right, right. And for me, this is the fountain of youth. It's the way that we can hold back the hands of time as you continue to go. It's what you call, you call yoga the, the glue. The glue. And that's fountain what of youth is. and the glue to everything else in your life so you can improve in everything else in your life. 100%. Without it, you're going to have issues with it. And with what you're doing, you're getting a lot all at once, which is awesome. Awesome. All right, so here's the deal. What makes this different is it's a combination of things. I don't ever call it yoga gotcha. because they're expecting reach your arms to the heavens so the universe smiles back at you. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna start cool, cool. by bringing our feet out hip distance. All right. And all I'm gonna do is right now just start, get slightly bend your knees. All mm -hmm. right. Now I want you to grip your toes into the mat oh. so you feel it in your calves and everything. All right? Yeah, right. Now I want you to straighten your legs and I want you to try to pull them together but don't move them. Isometrics and work your adductors. Oh, here. that's happening. Right. right now on. tuck your tailbone and squeeze your glutes. Gotcha. Now hit them. Flex the quads. Flex the glutes. Grab the ball. Now what I want you to do is open those fingers wide as you can. Tight, tight, tight. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Like that. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to create your own resistance as you take it up into touchdown. Keep going. Keep going. A little quicker. Oh, okay. Now reach for that left hand and stretch it. Open those fingers wide. Now reach for the right. Now we're gonna come down here, we're gonna push the thumb and index fingers together. Mm -hmm. And I mean push tight, like don't let me do that. 
put them like right, like this. Oh, oh yeah, out. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to burn the air. Tight, tight, don't let me do that. Yeah. Open those fingers, why? Grip your toes, Tony Horton. I feel that in my back. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Push together, tight, open those fingers. Inhale, take it back. Arms out to a T, clench your fist, hulk it up, Horton. Oh! Yeah! Now stay with me, open your fingers wide. Mm. Tension, shoulders back, chest out. At ease. <sighs> Ain't your mama's yoga, bro. Bring your feet together. <laughs> All the way together. My back was gonna explode. It was awesome. All right. Grip the toes, tuck the tailbone. Hit them, flex quads, flex glutes, grab the ball. Now I wanna bring your hands on your knees, turn your tailbone up. Instead of being to here, turn it up. Yep. Now, roll your shoulder blades back. Deep breath, exhale, fold forward. Run your hands right down your calves, tuck your chin, and get some length. Inhale, bent legged bar back, hands on your knees, roll your shoulder blades back. Exhale, fold forward. One more time. Inhale, bent legged bar back. Exhale, stiff legged bar back, straighten your legs. Almost coming off your heels a little bit here, looking over that ridge. Deep breath, exhale forward, and then down. Grab your elbows and hang. Oh yeah. Tuck your chin. Get a little more length. Deep breath. We already got Horton from 46 to 81 on the meter. Take it back. Arms out to a T, give it to me T. Hold it up, yeah. Head up. Huddle up, toes and knees out. Hands on your quad, shoulders over hips. Jack them if you got them. So this is where you take both hands, take a cross, and tighten them up. So you, you, these the, the cuffs, what are they called again? These are called, I call them jack straps. Because okay, <laughs> they get you it's jacked up. You right, know, and, right. and what they are is blood flow restriction straps. So when you're tourniqueting, and twisting them, it's cutting off, not completely, mm. but it's creating bl blood flow restriction. Mm. And you know, when you're lifting weights or doing any kind of multiple set, you really don't start to grow until you get to that last, that last two or three two or reps. Three reps yeah. And that's because all the blood's in there. Right. Well, this does that immediately. So, but the bottom line is, what DDPY really is, it gets you a kick-ass cardiovascular workout, mm. dramatically increase your flexibility, strengthen your core at a different level, and here's the kick all with minimal joint impact. So there's, wow. you're not beating up your body to have a really serious cardiovascular workout and break up scar tissue. So what's better than that? Oh, we're yeah. gonna reach out, just like we're doing back, yep. all right? Yep. And we're gonna pull, three, two, one. Count with me. Again, push, <laughs> three, two, one. This is three, two, two. Pull, three, two, Two, come on, Tony, count with me. Oh, Push. Three, three, two, two. two. Let's bring the energy. Pull. Three, three, two, two three. three. You're at 96. Push. Three, three two, two, three. three. Pull. Three, three, two, four. four. Deep breath. Push. Three, three two, two, five. Four. That's four. Four. Okay, four. Okay. Pull. Three, three two, two, six. Push. Three, three, three two, two, six. six. Keep your knees back. Pull. Three, three two. two Seven. Seven. Push. Three. three two, two. Seven. seven. Last one. Pull. Three. three two, two. Eight. And push. Three. three two, two. Eight. eight. Take it up uh. and touchdown. Oh. Pop them. Pull that chest through. Awesome. Drop those hips a little more. Deep breath. Exhale with down dog. Drop your head. Kill your toes. Lift your glutes. And let's walk the dog here. Stretching that oh. back. Yep. Hamstring and mm. behind your knees, mm. down in your Achilles, and just keep reversing it. Yep, yep. Want to challenge yourself? Come up on your fingertips. Deep breath. Exhale, bend your knees. Look at me. Step or pounce. Toes and knees out, squat drop and lower. Kind of opens up your lower back and chest. Oh, man. Feels great. After yesterday, this is gold. Pull. Three, three two, three. Push. Three, three two, three. three. Pull, three, three two, two, four. Push, three, three two, four. four. Squat in when you pull. Three, three two, two, five. Push, three, three two, two, five. Pull, three, three two, two, six. Push, three, three, three two, six. Seven. Two more. Three, 
two, seven, kill it. Three, two, seven, hold it, baby. Three, two, eight, and push. Three, two, eight. Take it in touchdown. Great job. Oh, pop him. Got you up to 112, baby. Standing still. Break up that plantar fasciitis in my hello left foot. In my right foot. <laughs> <laughs> Work it, baby. Come up on your fingertips. Deep breath. Exhale, bend your knees. Step or pounce. Squat drop and lower. Push them out. It's like any yoga you've ever done? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no. Left forearm to the mat. <sighs> Now let's take the left hand out mm. and let's twist the right hand open. <sighs> Inhale, fist the hand, mm. push him out. Right forearm down mm. and walk it across. Now open it up mm. and twist Ooh. that left hand open. Opposite uh, side, other side. Well, yeah, there you go. There it is. Your other left. Yes, thank you. Inhale, fist the hand. Still working on that. I know. <laughs> this one's three, two, three. <laughs> A lot going on here, Yeah, bro. man, I'm like, woo, I got it, I'm hanging, I'm trying to hang. <laughs> You're doing great, brother. I'm so, such an honor to be taking you through a workout, this is, bro. This is boss, brother, I'm telling you. Deep breath, and take it up. Three, two, two three. three, good guess. Three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. Last set here. Now bring that left forearm to the mat. <sighs> now reach through and grab your right Ankle, take your right hand up and just try to push and open up. Mm. Oh, Inhale. I love that. Isn't that Holy great? Smokes, where's that been my whole life? I did that one day because I just felt better when I did it. Dude. Right? It's right so forearm. Good. That's why I started doing this, because I just felt better. Bring your left hand on your left knee, grab your left ankle, and just open oh. it. <sighs> Fist the hand. This is a five count. Okay. Deep breath. Count me back. Five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. And a touchdown. Toes and knees forward, fold forward. So now we're in stretching position. We got you at 113. Wow. From 46. Inhale to touchdown. This Something is, is happening. This ain't your mama's yoga. No, ma'am. Right hand down, left hand over. Oh, take it up, diamond cutter, push them together, tight, take it back, out through a T, make some noise, Tony, yeah! yeah! Dead John, at ease, great job, brother, inhaling the cobra. Something's happening! <laughs> Exhale the down dog, inhale, take the left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Left leg. Left leg. <sighs> Deep breath. Exhale, left foot lunging. Let's get in that lunge now. Inhale up into superstar. Superstar. Now jack him if you got him. <sighs> now we're gonna do curls and tries. Oh my lord. And we're gonna pull. Three, two, one. one. Push it down. Three. Three. Two, two, one. Drop the knee a little when you pull. Pull. Three, three, three two, two, one. Two. Push. Three, three two, two, two. Pull. Three, two, three. three, two, three. 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 Push. Three, three, two, two, three. Pull. Three, three two, two, four. Push. Three, three two, two, four. Pull. Three, three two, two, five. Push. Three, three two, two, five. five. One more. Three, three, two, six. six. Push. Three, three two, two, six. six. Take it into superstar. Star. Pop if you got him. I got him. I got him popping. Bring oh. that right hand to the mat. Twist that left hand open. Now inhale, Tony. Just bring it through, just like this. And exhale, open. Really helps break up the scar tissue in your shoulders. I got oh. so many guys like that. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, one more time, inhale, exhale, count me back, five, five four, four three, three, two, 
One, One. now take that left hand, bring it towards your right heel. Try to look over that, over, over your chest, back at your hand. <clears throat> Deep breath. Exhale, all that air out. Inhale, bicep to your ear. Exhale, forearm to the mat. Inhale, twist it open. Exhale, count me back. Five, Five four, three, three two, two, one. one. We're gonna explode in the touchdown here. Deep breath, you have your hands here to modify. Biceps to your rib cage or interlace your fingers, whatever you wanna do. Deep breath. Mm. A little Ric Flair at the end of this. Deep breath, count me back. Five, Five four, four, three, two, one. one. Explode, woo! 10, Ten nine, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, six Five, four, four three, three, two, one. one. And hold. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. one. With control. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. one. Going down. Ten, Ten nine, nine. That's cruel. Eight, eight seven, six, five, four. Three, two, two, two and one. hold. Ten, Ten nine, eight, seven, six, six five, four, three, two, two, one. all the way down. Oh, I love you right now. <laughs> all right, forearm sphinx here. Pull your chest through. Pop those, those guns. Shit's crazy with these things, right? Dude! I never would be able to get your heart rate up like that I mean, without them. I'm seeing the evidence right <laughs> Pull it up a little farther. <sighs> Look up. Uh, you're lucky you really can look up. I can only look so far. <laughs> I didn't do what you did. <laughs> Can't fake gravity in wrestling, I'm baby. I'm telling you, man. Exhale, it's pull real. down. Go your toes, push into down dog. And let's just lower in the safety zone. Spread your knees oh. wide. Open them up, push your heels, hips back to heels. Never in my life. Dallas, ever. This is insane, and I love it. I love it that you love it, I man. love it. I'm in love with it. <laughs> in love, in love, in <laughs> love than the cat lift. I knew I was gonna love you, man. Yeah, good. Exhale well, the cat arch. I was scared of you, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but Drop I'm your not head. anymore. Arch Fired your up. back, tuck your tailbone. <sighs> you know, cat lift. Mm. Look up. Exhale, cat arch. You know, cat lift. Let's curl the toes, push it in down dog. And let's take that right leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Deep breath. Exhale, right foot lunging. Come up in a supported lunge. I know what's coming. <laughs> yes, you do. I know what's coming. Up into, what is it called? Superstar! I love that chick from uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, my buddy roommate with her for five years. Yeah. Molly Shannon, yep. Dude, I gotta be able to do a workout with her just to I'm know I'm gonna to say, make that happen for I you. I love that. I'm gonna make that happen for you. I right, do this because of her. Super, super star. Okay, Jack, if you got him. Pop him. Bring that uh, left hand to the mat. Ooh. Swiggle that left leg back deep. Yep. Twist that right hand open. Ooh. Now inhale, pull it through. Exhale, open. Inhale, pull it through. Exhale, open. Two more. Inhale, pull it through. Exhale, open. One more time. Inhale, pull it through. Exhale, count it back. Take it open. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Now let's bring that right hand back towards your left heel. Deep breath. Exhale, bring that bicep to your ear. Mm. Exhale, bring that forearm to the mat. Mm. Inhale, twist it open. Exhale, mm. count it back. Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two, one. Both hands in the mat, swing that right leg up. Shake that out. Oh. Come back, fingertips. And lower for five, Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. And hold. Five, four, three, two, one. With control. Five, Five four, four, three, two, two one. one. And lower. Five, what? four, Dude. three. Come on, Tony Horton. Get in this, baby. Get in. Five, four, three, two, one. And hold. Five, four, 
three, two, one, all the way down. Oh my God. My thumbs don't normally do that. <laughs> Just open it up here. Come on, end up with some mm. table and then we'll go right to the mat. Now this oh. time, take your right hand behind your back. Let's walk that left hand across the mat. Oh, that's good. <sighs> open up that whole left side. <sighs> I've done yoga, you know, 20 years. It ain't never looked like this. <laughs> Bring it back up. Safety zone, left oh. hand behind the back. Take that right hand across the mat. Oh man, that stretch is awesome. Oh, it's amazing. Oh yeah. The hand behind the back, I've never done that before. That changes the whole thing. Now come back and come right in the table. And that for me, like everything, so many of these things, I'm gonna show you a couple other things. This is all stretching stuff though. Yeah. Here. Inhale, cat lift, look up. Exhale, cat arch. This right here is the absolute best thing for your back. I learned this in rehab. A lot of yoga places will do it, <laughs> yep. but this is really a rehab move, big time. It's awesome. Deep breath. Now let's just reach back and grab that foot. Perfect. You got it? And take it up. Perfect. Because we're going to go someplace with this right after this. It's a different, a different um, I guess it would be a different, uh, or you call them spots in wrestling. Mm. It would be a different uh, run here. So what we're going to do, is exhale, take it out, let it go and get the length. Mm. Need an elbow, you say one. One. Get it long, crunch. Two. Two. Crunch. Three. Three. Crunch. Crunch. Four. Four. Last one. Crunch, crunch. and hold. Five. Five. Four. Four. Three. Three. Two. Two. One. one. Inhale, reach and stretch. Count it back. Five. Five. Four. 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 Three. Three. Two. Two. One. one. Now, here's why I did this. Walk this over. And let's sit into a hurdle, well, I call can opener. But people will know maybe it's a hurdle or stretch or pigeon or- Pigeon, yeah. You know, and this really helps. Like my, when I started here, Tony, I was You here. were underneath there. I was there. I'm still not, you're, you're in a better place than I am. Well, Look I do it my... every day, every day. Cause my knees are bone on bone and I'm sure yours gotta be close. Mine aren't so good. Yeah. yeah. So start to work that back foot back. Try to see, even if it's back here, just try to trap this so right. you get used to that, okay? Mm. And just try to straighten that back leg out a little bit. Yep. Let's just bring that left forearm down. Mm. And then the right. Mm. And then take them as far as you want to go. Mm. Just breathe into it. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. <sighs> as you know, no one knows this better than you, Tony Horton, that this gets super stiff, mm. especially at our age, baby. You know, you got to keep hitting it, baby. You just got to keep hitting Dude, it. This is, you know, I mean, I, you know, as you know, I've done so many different workouts. Yes. And yoga has always been a huge part. Regular yoga, right. you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is the fountain of youth, man. Like nothing else. 100%, man. I loved when you called yoga the glue. It's the glue. Yeah. It's the... It's the, it's the key to everything else. 100%. Man. Yoga allows your body to be able to do all the other things you want to try. Right. <laughs> and allows you to keep doing them. Keep doing them, yeah. Okay, now walk your hands back. Here's something no one's ever done before besides me that I know of. I'm sure people are using it. But curl your toes, take your knee up the ground, take the left leg up. Let's stretch it first. That's not the mm -hmm. new thing, but this is. Let's come down. Just, just walk the dog a second. Yeah. And then I want you to just take your right foot, put it on your left ankle and then drop your hips. Oh. And re so just kind of like readjust mm. the hip. So you know, it's so out of configuration mm. what we just had it in. Just let it, oh. That's, nice. That's nice just strap. great for my toes. Yeah, so Spend much, I mean, so much for the toes. Man. And my arch. Into bridge, and let's bring our hands underneath and roll our shoulders under into suspension bridge. Mm. Pick up your right foot, put it on your left knee, look over your left shoulder. Mm. Now this side was chronic for me. Oh wow. Yeah, it just got really, I just couldn't do it, couldn't do it. In the last six months, I've been able to do it with a, for, because of a series of reasons. Yeah, but you've always got this to come back to, you know? I mean, if there's anything, you can go all the king's horses and all the king's men can't always put you back together again. 100%. And you got yoga, man, because the more you do, the better you get. 100% yeah. or DDPY, right? Correct. <laughs> My, yes. Like that I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make that mistake another time. <laughs> Pick that left knee up and grab that back of the hamstring or the shin. And on that first stretch, just keep 
Oh. Little exhale, little inhale. Little exhale, little inhale. Inhale, let it go. Get the length. Pull that foot away from your hands. Exhale, reach through and let's get that crunch again. Inhale, pinfall on the bridge. Mm. Exhale, human cannonball. Mm. Pinfall on the bridge. Exhale, human cannonball. Bring it in tight, tight, tight. Kick out. Woo! You're a dead man. Oh. And if there was women here, there'd be a dead woman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Shavasana, right? Dead man. Dead man. <laughs> I just think of Undertaker. You're a dead man. <laughs> Tony Horton. Fist to hand, brother. It was an honor, a serious honor to be here with you in your home, which is really sweet. Thank you, bro. Take the deepest breath of the day, my brother. Exhale, check it out. Push it out. Hit it. Bang! Boom. Uh. Hello, power people. It is I, Tony Horton. You might know me from some of my past workout programs and my sports supplement brand, Power Life. Now, I've trained some of the biggest stars on the planet, from rock stars to action heroes. But between now and when I'm in my hundreds, I want to live large, I want to take charge, I want to feel good. And you can do it too. Oh, but Tony, I've never exercised a day in my life. Look at yourself in the mirror, and if it's not going the way you want to go, I'm here to help you do it, because I can. Anybody can do it. And if you're willing to take charge and feel good about your life, I don't care if you're 40 or 50 or 60 or 70, it can be done. All you got to do is train, and you've got to consume the right things to fuel your body so you have the energy and enthusiasm to show up day after day day after day. Trust me, it can happen. Do you really want me to flex? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, brother. Uh, oh, you gonna make it? You rocked <laughs> my world. I just saw every toy you have in the world for uh, fitness. You, you, you're the, you're the man for that stuff. I just give you a little bit of something different. No, and man, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, dude. I mean, I've done yoga. I've never <laughs> done DDPY. All right. Different, so, right? I mean, look, I did my research. I checked you out. You know what I mean? I knew of you, right? But meeting you, you're a, you're a, you're a, fun, you're a good dude, man. Thank you, boss. You're, you're a really great guy. And that was extraordinary. And it was different. And, and, the, and the muscle pump and the calorie burn and my heart rate cranking. You know, in yoga, eh, you know, warrior one, warrior right. two, blah, blah, blah. Uh, which I love because it keeps me, you know, it's the glue to everything else. Sure. Right? Keeps me, I think keeps everyone me. has to have some kind of yoga in their life. And if you're a guy who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga... I developed something for you. Oh. You, know? <laughs> you made it accessible yeah. to a lot of people who think it, who think it think it's crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, yoga, om. Um. You know, there's a lot to it. There's fifty thousand kinds, but you, yours is accessible and it's necessary for so many people out there who would never even consider it, and it's life changing for those folks. And for me, I mean, I crawled in here. I didn't need to crawl in, <laughs> <laughs> or did I? <laughs> Which is a camera. I'm gonna say it's that. One. Um, but, but the curls and the tricep extensions the pump, and, the, and, the, right? and the fingertip yeah. push-ups, like my thumbs, like I do crazy stuff here at my Yeah, house, you, you know do. I mean? But boy, I mean, there are a few times I'm like, I'm on camera, I cannot screw this up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dallas is killing it and I gotta, you know, I gotta perform. But no, no, I mean, I, I feel amazing. And like you and I were talking before, you know, you go to the gym and you lift weights and Bobby, that's great in your 20s and 30s, but a lot of people aren't willing to transition. So they keep, they keep trying to do that stuff in the gym, and some get away with it, but a lot of them, like you were saying, oh man, I don't, oh, that's gonna take me a couple weeks to recover from my workout. Yeah, and, and that's not what you want. I want people to feel that they're energized. I wanna feel like they're ready to go, like, like you said earlier, you got a, an hour of workout you're gonna do here later tonight, and you're warmed up now for oh, it. You I, know? I'm ready, baby. And, and this is something like for me, and the, the reason why I, I'm so passionate about branding my company, which is DDP Yoga, DDP Why, why? Because I want people to stop calling it just yoga. And I love all types of yoga. I was the guy though, at first 42 years of my life, wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga. <laughs> but when you, when, when you start wrestling at 35 mm -hmm. and your career takes off when you're 40, which was 1996 for me, and not right away, on the back end of 40, going into 1997, and my career exploded. The Monday Night Wars were going on, mm -hmm. and it was a WWF against WCW. And at that point when we exploded, 
I was killing it. I mean, it was it was driving me to a force where I was wrestling 272 to 278 days a year. And that doesn't mean like I'm just working. I mean, hitting my body, hitting the mat. And people can think what they want about professional wrestling, but one thing we can all agree with, <laughs> you can't fake gravity. No. You know what I mean? And no. one one match, just one match, would it be like, especially a TV match, would be like having five or six car accidents. And your yeah. body- It makes professional football look like, like you know, well, they're, field they're, hockey. You yeah, know well, saying? they're tough too. They're super yeah, tough, sure, but they sure. play one day a week. Right. Except for the linemen. And I work with a lot of the NFL linemen because we are part of the NFL alumni. We, I give my program to mm. all those guys because mm. they need they it. Need it and if, yeah. you, if you're a lineman, every time you hit, but the rest of the guys, they don't ever touch a quarterback. A lot of running backs don't get hit. You yeah. know, they're so yeah. guys who they're still beating up their body, but ours is 270. When you're on top, days a year in the ring bouncing, then driving 100, 200, 300 miles to the next, to the next gig, and there's nobody driving me. No. There's nobody unpacking my car. There's no one checking us into the hotel, then finding us a place to eat, then go to the gym, and then do it all over again. But it's the smell of the prop, the smell of the popcorn, the roar of the crowd. Mm. That's what brings you back. And Ric Flair said it the best. It's amazing what your body can get used to. But at some point, you're gonna feel it. And mm. I just signed a multi-million dollar three-year deal. And that's when I ruptured my L4 and L5 so severely, I had three spine specialists telling me my career's over. I saw the move. I saw when it happened. And it, it, it exploded. And I remember, I remember watching you come out of the ring, right? You came out yeah. of the ring and you went, you reached back. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like, I, you know, it's like, uh, did he really get hurt there? He really, yeah. My mom, my mom Dude, you were, you were like 15 feet in the air and landed on the back of your head, man. Yeah. That was, um, yeah. yeah that was, you know, just multiple car crashes like that Jeez. and again in my 40s my whole run was in my 40s not in my 20s or 30s right so at that point you know when i'm being told i just signed a multi-million dollar deal it's gone in six months if i can't get back in a ring right. so yoga and thank god yoga came into my life and mm. it, it really started to help me in the first couple of weeks but i knew it wasn't giving me everything so i just started to mix the yoga with the rehab so that's when I added the whole thing together. Yoga, rehab, old school calisthenics, and dynamic resistance. And in less than three months, I was back in the ring. So I knew I was gonna have to do it the rest of my life. Now let me, I wanna say one thing and then I wanna ask you a question after that. Sure. What I love about what you did, I mean, I talked about it being accessible to more and more people, is that you reinvented, like you combined movements, asanas, whatever, postures, right. that I've never seen before. And then you like I, I rename everything like you know yeah. let's call it a, let's call it a leaning inclined dumbbell pr no let's call it the gavirch demeanor push <laughs> you know I hate calling it the traditional stuff right and what what, what that does at least for me because I've totally related to that I just feel like oh wow it it doesn't have to be child's pose it doesn't have to be cat cow it can be you know it just it right. just create it just gives it a whole new vibe plus all the resistance work with the bands right. with your you know with your cables there the sure. bottom line is though my workouts start off in bed. Like you can't get out of bed, I've got bed flex. You do three of those workouts. Bed flex. Bed right. flex. Mm -hmm. And then you sit in a chair and you do chair force. And it's everything from dynamic resistance, just like I was doing with mm -hmm. you and holding your legs out and taking up in a touchdown and diamond cutter, all the same stuff Fun. in a chair. And then next level, that's called chair force. Then stand strong is where you hold on to a chair. And I'm talking about just a regular chair. You fold out, you put it down, put the legs on the mat, and then that helps you. This is all my rebuild series, and it helps you start to rebuild back your balance, uh, your strength. Uh, helps break up scar tissue because you've got that car, that chair there, mm. so you don't fall down. So now you can start really building back your balance. That prepares you for a beginner. And then it goes all the way from beginner and immediate advance, the psycho extreme stuff. What level were we in there? Um, about medium, medium, intermediate, intermediate. Oh, dang. Yeah. Dang. And it was Thank just. Thank God he didn't go full <laughs> bore on it. Well, you know, you told me about the, the you know, your, your, your balancing My stuff balance and stuff. Issues, yeah, so yeah. I just wanted to give a limited amount of that. That yeah, was perfect. You know, and, perfect. 
And what this is right here, these are, will always be called my jacked workouts. These straps, I haven't decided if I'm gonna call them power cups or not. I haven't come up with a name yet that I really love. But you take it all the way up. Now these are used mainly, their use was for rehabilitation. And again, all of my program is about rehabilitation. Right. I blew my back out. They said my career's over. Because of this program, in less than three months, I was back in the ring. At 42, they said my career is over. At 43, I won my first world championship, which is like our Oscar, okay? Right. So right. It, 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 I wrestled all the way till I was 46, took off two years and came back at 49 just to show what I could do still at 49. Uh, so congratulations, recently married. Yes. That's kind of amazing. Yeah. Uh, I hear that you did something a little uh, unusual, a little extraordinary. What, <laughs> what, what, what was that? Man? I threw my wife a surprise wedding. <laughs> And she, she, had, she knew we were gonna get married sometime last year in 2021, and it was ticking down. Mm. And she'd already given me two lists, one for a short one, little, you know, couple family members, right. and one for a little bigger one. And she already, so I already had all that like seven months ahead of time. Now it's ticking down, it's December, and we have our big Christmas party, which is 200 people, you know, it gets a big deal. I can't wait to go next year. Dude, you've now you gotta call that out, you gotta say that, you better come, because no. you're yeah, getting I'm, an invitation. All, with COVID over, I came out of the house two years, man. <laughs> I'm gonna go places and do things. Dude, my house makes Macy's look like they don't even decorate no it. No kidding. Not on the outside, Shauna on will the inside. Be mad for that. Inside's insane. Ugh. So the bottom line is, she's been, Paige has been working, my, my, my wife's name is Paige, and my first name, before I changed it from to Dallas Page 25 years ago, was Paige Joseph Falkenberg. Wow, and, and I like knew a that. scientist. <laughs> yeah. So is her name Paige Page now? Uh, because Jack LaLanne's wife, you know what her name was? No. Elaine, yeah. LaLanne. Oh my God, <laughs> that's cool, Elaine LaLanne I love that. was married to Jack LaLanne. So she is, she is Paige Page, but her last name before she made the change with me was McMahon. Oh. Which Vince McMahon, which is like crazy, right? right, right. So, and she had a career before me. Mm. Like she was a, 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 a one of those adventure athletes right. who runs a hundred miles, puts a backpack on her back, Damn. and runs. She ran a hundred and seventy miles in six and a half days through the Grand Canyon. In six and a half days, she's what? climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Fuji. Whoa. Like she's an athlete, Whoa. and so. We're gonna. It'll be Page McMahon Page, but everybody's. Calling I like it Paige, that. Paige. I like that. That flows nice though. It does. It does. But everybody so what, calls what was the Paige, shock Paige. value on that though? When she, when she was like, "Hi, I'm honey. I'm what?" I mean, like she opened the door and instead of happy birthday, it was she put a ring on her finger. Or no, you no, had. no. What what happened was at Christ, at the Christmas party, she was worried, and she came out of the shower. She had a towel on. She walked up to me. She put her arms around me and she said. You're not marrying me today, are you? Because she's exhausted, right, oh. from the party. And I go, I just laughed out loud because she, it's December 4th. And we're going to get married by the end of the year. Oh. So I said, no, but not today. And she started laughing. I go, maybe tomorrow. And it was actually four days later at the same hotel we reunited at, mm -hmm. which was... Uh, eight years later that we actually reunited and got together at, but she didn't know at the time. My daughter, Brittany, had put all of it together. So it was like, the when we walked in this hotel, it's a little boutique hotel and I rented out the whole thing. It's called The Dwell in mm -hmm. Chattanooga. It's a really cool, like 50s, 60s type theme. Mm -hmm. And she saw, you know, she thought maybe it's gonna be at The Dwell, but there was a, closed for a private party and it had some lawyers names on there. So when we got in the hotel, they rushed us up to, uh, to our room and uh, I'm safe now, I'm excited. Two and a half hours later, we're leaving. She thinks we're going to a party, a red and white Christmas party mm. in Nashville. So she's got this gorgeous red evening gown on, got this white suit with a red shirt on. Mm. And we got to the bottom of the steps and as we're getting ready to leave there's some girl with a with a with a camera and then they started opening up the curtains and she saw her brother and she looks ah! at me and she goes are, are we doing this is this happening i go this is happening and then her, her family was there my family was there she's tearing up big time she can't mm -hmm. believe like we're getting married here i got i never asked her to marry me i told her on our second date back together Eventually, I'm going to marry you. 
just like that. So she goes, oh, well, you okay. never dropped the knee or any of that stuff. I did right there. For right the first there. Time. <laughs> so you asked her to marry you, then you married her. Right. That had to be like a Guinness record between past <laughs> and happening. The, That's the, amazing. The, uh, we walked to the back and she's just so happy. Okay, God, it's going to be a great night. And then she sees all her friends. So there was a, that was like a surprise, a surprise, and a surprise. So happiest day of her life, and, and that definitely mine too. It was a wow, magic moment, man. Wow, man. So uh, I, I finally got with some my favorite person, you know. Like, mm. you know, I, we, we never, we've been together two and a half years now. And we, we if there's anything that can get sketched a little, which everybody gets like that, a little scratchy, you know, we just talk, we talk through it. And it's, it's like, at six, in my 60s, I'm not here to argue with you. I, <laughs> right. I want to right. love you. You want to be right or do you want to be happy? Right. I just, yeah. I just want us both to be happy. Right. I don't give a, a damn who's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. They got beeping or keeping it. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. But no, man, I mean, I'm, I'm that same way about Shauna. I just met my best friend. Took me six years. She, about the fifth year, she's like, uh, <laughs> what are you doing? Because I'm the Marion type. I can only do hang on for so long. And then, and then it's funny, we went to Hawaii, I'll make it short, but I had four strategies to ask, ask her to marry me. The right. first one was get, we're going to get, we literally put our luggage in the hotel room. This is in Hawaii somewhere. I can't remember what, Kauai maybe? Kauai, I love Kauai. Yeah, Kauai's amazing. Yeah. We get in a helicopter and I was going to ask her to marry me in the helicopter floating in front of that big ass long waterfall that's oh, there. Oh, wow. Right, that's you know cool. what I mean? But then the three of us were like, there's Bob, the fingerless pilot, right, in <laughs> Vietnam, right? And he goes, it's, it's we're, we're, and, I, and I can't get the ring because we're on top of each other and there's no wind. It's not a door. You can stick your hand right. And so we're like on top of it. So, and so it's so loud. I, and then he goes, I can't stay here. It's too, the weather's bad. And so on the fourth one, uh, there was another one at a hotel, uh, I mean, at a, at a restaurant. They're going to do it outside. They were going to put a table out there by the water. The only table that everybody else was going to be inside. Rain sideways. <laughs> Just pissing rain. Uh, that was another. And then they had another opportunity on a horse. That went to shit. And then finally, the very last one, like, I don't have a fifth one. And we were just by the beach having, having a picnic, and she's there, like, taking pictures. And I went, this is it, man. Uh, I ran up to the thing, and I got put, I sit, and I, and I, Dropped to a knee and she looked at me and go, now, because she had no idea. She thought it was going to be like in a month or two or three or next right, year. Right. And, and then she jumped on me and I think I almost blew out my knee. But, uh, then, <laughs> but it was awesome, man. And I've been, we've been together six years and it's just magic, man. That's, it's the best. Okay, next. Now, you've always been an athlete. Um, and, you know, uh, how did this passion for sports in general, like, how did that start for you? Well, for starters, I couldn't read. You know, was, I had 30 years old, I was reading at about third grade level. Mm. So, wow. you know, it wasn't like I could study. I couldn't read. And, mm. and you know, I, didn't, I just kind of like faked and cheated and did what I had to do to get by. Personality but, got you through. Yeah, well, I got ADD and dyslexia in, in, in our age growing up, you know, yeah. in the 60s. I had ADD, ADHD, Elemental P, NYPD. <laughs> MOK, M-O-C-K-Y. I had, I had every acronym I had of it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but... So sports had to be, that had to be my thing, you know? Mm. And I loved football and hockey. Um, and then I got hit by a car. I walked out right in front of it. It hit this knee. My face bounced off the hood at 12. Oh. And I flew 42 feet from the point of impact on snow, on slush. And uh, that, slowed you down a little that, that ended my, you know, my football and hockey. To me, I was going to be playing for the Dallas Cowboys or the New York Giants as a you know, defensive end. Mm. That was my mindset as a little kid, wow. you know. Wow. And now the doctors are like, no, can't, can't let you do that. You can't do that anymore. There was no such thing as rehab back then. No. You know. They put a cast on you, waited, uh, whatever, eight weeks, and then you figured it out. Right. And he was like, you better hit the books. Oh, that's an issue. You know. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, so um they gave me two sports I could play. And I can't believe they would let me play basketball, considering my knee was supposed to be so bad. You know, because basketball is all knees. All, yeah, you know, it's yeah, all yeah. shifting and jumping Changing and direction. jumping and twisting and yeah. turning. And uh, that or baseball. And baseball, I sucked at both of them. Mm -hmm. And they, what was really interesting is that baseball, you have to have guys. You have to have at least one other guy to throw the ball to, you know? <laughs> know. With basketball, you really don't need anybody. No. Like, you can practice everything. And I sucked. You know, in seventh grade, I didn't make the team. I didn't care because I didn't like basketball. Mm. But all your buddies played, so you went and tried out. Well, right. the second, in eighth grade, I made the team, oh. but I sat on the bench. Mm. And I'd never sat on the bench ever. Right. And it taught me that summer, I learned what work ethic was. 
and I played from, from the minute I woke up, hitchhiked to the park, and played basketball till dark. You know, right. bring some food with me, and then come back. And that's that summer changed my life as far as me as an athlete, and it really gave me like it built confidence. Mm. And that's what I think my whole program, my whole my whole DDPY program, it builds confidence with stuff you couldn't do. Now you can. Well, I learned that as an athlete, as being a kid. Right. Well, well, shots I couldn't make. Now I make easily, you know, and mm, mm. so the the whole uh, the whole you know education thing pushed me to sports because I didn't right. have that. Right. Now later at 30 years old, that's when I started to make you know make a decision. I was going to learn how to read proficiently, and how I did it was setting a goal. Right then was to read a book from cover to cover, and like for most people that wouldn't be a big deal. But for me, at that point, it was overwhelming. Mm. So I broke it down. And that's when I started learning about breaking goals down. Because mm. it goes back to playing sports. What did I do? Well, I didn't just try to go out there and play, you know, 24 minutes straight or whatever. I broke it down and played X amount to build my conditioning. Same thing with your brain. And I put a thing. I was going to read one page every day. But I just didn't say it. I wrote it down. I tell mm. people all the time, just don't think it ink it and I wrote read today hmm. and I put it everywhere and if I didn't do that it's kind of like people you know they start your program they're all excited and then three weeks later life gets in the I'm way out. and yeah, it's yeah, out yeah, we're yeah, done yeah, and they're yeah, gone yeah. but if they would have really set goals for themselves if they would have wrote it down if they like I have in my phone I've got alarms now like mm -hmm. alarms that hit me, alarms on my calendar to make sure that I do certain things because my life can go just like sure. yours sure. and you can get caught in the middle of life and forget to do things. Well, I write everything down and that's how I really stay accountable to myself. And I finally did read that book from cover to cover. It took a year, but right. I did it, you did it. and it really started the focus on what I could do because I knew someday I wanted to be an actor. You know, so and you got to be able to read. Is a, is, a, is a monster. No, it is. You got to yeah. be able to read them to learn them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yes, you do. When you first came out, and when you were thirty-five years old, right? And you had, you know, you had. I mean, you know, they were probably the early days where there were smaller crowds and you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, what was your mindset early? Were you scared on those early ones, or did you were you pretty confident early on? No. Had you put in the work at that point yeah, no, to be able no. to get up there and fly around and do what you do? Or, or was it no. like, holy crap, man, I hope I pulled this off tonight. Well, here's how, here's what happened. I literally made, and I heard Tony Robbins say this one time, I invented Tony Robbins. You invented Tony Orton. Mm. You know what I mean? We all do that. And it's a powerful thing. And one night in my club, this is a great story. Uh, I am sitting around with, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the drawers. We had this big club, Norma Jeans, right? Sure, there's yeah. seven bars, there's 15 bartenders, and you walk around with a bouncer and you grab wow. all the money and you bring it to the back. And then the bartenders come back and count their money. Well, that's when we just started drinking. You know, <laughs> we're, we're going to drink for the next couple of hours, right? We're all in our late 20s, early 30s. Right. And when I'm at the one drawer, I'm looking at the screen. Uh, we had video, it's at 1984. Five, maybe 86, I think it was 86. And um, it's Cindy Lauper video and it's girls just wanna have fun. Mm. And there's a, there's a guy named Captain Lou Albano who was in professional wrestling, a manager who was an amazing over the top individual. And he was involved with Cindy and all the big, that's when wrestling blew up. He plays yeah. her dad in that video. Plays her dad. He plays her dad. Exactly. That's right. That's right. And I'm watching that video. Now, you have to understand, I tried wrestling when I was 23. I had three matches, hurt the same knee, yeah. and the doc told me, take off a month or so, and then you can go back and do it. And I was just learning, like, once a week wrestling. And, mm. uh, but I wrestled three times in front of people. And... When I hurt my knee, I got a chance to run my first roll of rock and roll bar. I've been in the bar business since I was 17. So I'd already been in wrestling and I already had it in my head. And I'm watching that film and I'm like, rock and wrestling. Man, I should have been a part of that. And I just walked away. I was talking to myself, I was talking out loud. And the bartender who was there, Smokey, walked in and he's like, Paige J. Remember, I'm Paige Joseph Falkenberg. No one right, knows right. who Dallas Page is, right, right, you know? Right. And uh, he goes, Paige J, what do you mean? Rock and wrestling, you should have been a part of that. 
I said, well, I tried when I was 23. He goes, what? You were a wrestler? He goes, what was your name? I said, Handsome Dallas Page. <laughs> and he said, whew, you can forget about using that gimmick anymore. And everybody burst out laughing. And then now my brain goes there while we're all drinking. And I just start doodling on this, this pad. And I write, Diamond. Dallas Page. And then I'm thinking, I'm too old to be a wrestler. I'm not said anything yet, mm. but I could be a manager. And I write Diamond Exchange. So you know, we're drinking and doing shots now. And I'm like, you know, I'm too old to be a wrestler anymore. I'm How old are you there? 31 at the time. Wow. And I was like, but I could be a manager. I said, what if my name was Diamond Dallas Page and I manage the Diamond Exchange? Woo, shot, shot, drink, drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then now we're not like alcohol to kind of nah, pump up the thoughts. Just, you know, get you going. Some yeah, people yeah. use herb, yeah, yeah. and again, this is all in my brain. Mm. I write it down. About a week later, um, I get a call from this guy. That, his name is Kevin. He does this party news network. It's a little local, little local, um, uh, like a cable show that does up and down from Sarasota to Naples, all through Florida, mm. like what's happening in the town. And I did all my own radio commercials back then, which again, got me ready for wrestling, but they uh. didn't really know it at the time. Yeah, so yeah. I, I had ideas in my head in my, my little scratch notes nobody could read, because it's my chicken scratch, so I'm trying right. to figure out what I'm gonna say for these spots. And they wanted to know who was the guy behind the voice, because I would throw synthesizer for what the Thursday, Thursday, right. and I, you know, and I might throw in, oh yeah, don't miss it, hot legs, thousand dollars, cash and prizes. Now, what I didn't mention earlier, Jake Snake Roberts had been in my club, Ted DiBiase, Million Dollar Man, uh, the Bushwhackers, I had so many of the guys, if you wrestled Tampa. So they were in your life already. Right, God sent them there, because yeah. if you wrestled Tampa in Miami, Right in between there, that's 300 mile trip. Remember mm -hmm. I was saying, drive 100, 200, 300 yeah, miles? Yeah. That's a 300 mile trip. Fort Myers is right in the middle. When they found out they had some big Mark who was a big fan for them and didn't charge anybody, yo, know, they came in. So they they became buddies of mine. Mm -hmm. And so this is all, they, they didn't know if it was Randy Savage or it was you know someone doing his voice. So they mm -hmm. wanted to do a, a story on the voice. And at some point, and I looked like a wrestler back then. I had long blonde hair. And I was in the studio and they filmed me there. I'm wearing a WrestleMania t-shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I was a fan. Right. And, right. you know, at some point they're in my office and they go, so where does the voice come from? Now, Tony, if there's not a pair of white sunglasses sitting there, right there next to those where I wrote Diamond Dolls Page, Diamond Exchange and Diamond Dolls. If those glasses aren't there, if I can't hide behind them, I don't know if I do it, but they were there. Oh. And I threw them on and, and I said- That transformed you. Right, exactly. The voice comes from Diamond Dolls Page oh. today. I was born to be a professional wrestling manager. And it just, it, you know, they, they loved it and they put it in the spot. And then someone saw it, a guy named Smitty from Smitty Sports Talk. He had a radio show and he called up and I get a call in the front. I'm in my office, right? And I get a call from the front desk and I hear, uh, Paige, there's someone on the phone for a Diamond Dallas page. <laughs> <laughs> and I pick up the phone, I go, F you, Smokey. And I hang up the phone <laughs> and she calls me back. She goes, that wasn't Smokey. His name is Smitty, he's got a radio show. And I pick up the phone, I go, who is this? And the guy basically tells me that he wants me to come on his show. I go, dude, I don't really do it. I was just playing. I was just, you know, it's something in my head. It's not like an idea, it's not a goal, it's not anything. Wow. He goes, I'm gonna have Captain Lou Albano on the show. Like, what's the odds of that? And I said, the Captain's gonna be on the show? Well, I get to talk to him? He's like, dude, you're my expert. I go, I'm in. So I did it with wow, him. Man. I did it with I did it with uh, Sergeant Slaughter. And Smitty, we went and got a few drinks that night after that second show. He's like, man, you've got to do something with this Diamond Dallas Page thing. I'm like, do what? That's it's just an idea. It's blowing my mind. And he says, I've got 
this friend of mine in the AWA, his name's Rob Russell, because Smitty is a boxer. So he does boxing most, he's, he's doing wrestling now once a month. He said, I got this friend of mine, used to be a boxing promoter, now he works in the AWA in the Midwest. He goes, and you should send him a tape. I go, of what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you'll think of something, you're creative. So I put this whole thing together and I send it to Rob Russell. I swear to God, Tony, two weeks later, I get a call from him. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page there. Now this time I'm like, yes, uh, who's this? Rob Russell from the AWA. We want to bring you and your boys out for a tryout. We want to bring you out to Vegas. He goes, but we've got one question. We've shown your, your, your tape around. Everybody likes your stick, but no one's ever heard, heard of, of you before. <laughs> Where are you guys working? Um, well, Rob, uh, truth is, none of those guys can wrestle. What? Why would you send the tape? I go, because it's like a secret society. You can't get in. And, you know, and I go, don't, I could, but I could manage some guys. Why? They're training. They, those guys want to be wrestlers. Uh, don't call us. We'll call you. Oh. And that's fate. This is God's work, not mine. Would have it. A guy named Paul Heyman. He's a huge star in WWE. He's a creative guy. He does writing. He's booking. Really smart dude. Back then, he was called Paulie Dangerously and a young manager. He left the AWA and he went to the NWA, which left a huge void for a young guy that could talk. And that's how I got started. And for three and a half years, making no money, mm. between that and Florida Championship Wrestling, I friggin' basically worked for nothing. Whoa. It cost me money to be Diamond Dallas Page. And I finally got the break in WCW. They brought me in as a manager. And then five, well, it took me four months to get a contract. Five months into that contract, they say they pulled me aside and they're like, listen, Diamond, we can't let you manage anymore. I'm like, what did I do wrong? Come, come on, Magnum, I'll fix it. I got two of the best guys. I mean, I, I, I thought I was getting over. He goes, yeah, he goes, it's not your fault. I go, what do you mean it's not my fault? He goes, the hair, the clothes, the bling, the wrap, the dolls. You're taking too much attention away from the wrestler. Oh, wow. And I'm like, Magnum. Wow. It's a sobering moment for me right there. I said, are you telling me I'm too over the top for professional <laughs> wrestling? You know? And he said, That's it's wet. not your fault, D. He goes, what we should have done is put you in a pair of tights and boots and see if you could do this. I had seven months left of my contract, Tony. Hmm. I'm like, I never got in this business because I wanted to be a manager. Maybe at the end of a career, mm. I wanted to be a wrestler. Man, how, old you, how, you, how old were you at that point? 35. That's when it kicked in then. That's when it kicks in. And I go down there, and I swear to you, they beat the f*** out of me. Because <laughs> you're a manager? Wait a oh, minute. the manager you're, wants you're, to be a wrestler oh, now. Who cares if you're six foot four? Yeah. And I would keep my weight back then around 210, 215, because I didn't want to be too big. Right. You know, I just boom, 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 and you know, started blowing up. And, mm. and they, they, they realized I wasn't going anywhere. And I set the precedent down there. I literally started wrestling within two months, and it was only sporadic. Um, but I stayed at that power plant for five years. If I was, and there was times where I was on the road, actually four years. I was on the road, and I come off the road, I went back, right back there, because I wanted to be able to be able to wrestle with anyone. Mm -hmm. And again, it comes back to the work ethic, right? Mm -hmm. Inside this ring, this Hall of Fame ring, it says Can I work. See that thing now? It says work ethic equals dreams. Explanation point. DDP. And again, that's mm -hmm. it, it. Goes through my program. That goes through everything that we do. It's the work ethic that allows the other stuff to be easy. Like, not anybody's just jumping up there and grabbing your, your stuff and going. Nobody. But if you work at it and you train for it, you can do it. You know what's really impressive about you, just as an individual? Like, where you started and just the way you got to where you were at 35 and the career that you had, and Hall of Fame, and, and the championships, and across the board. None of that really should have technically happened, right? But you, <laughs> right. you, you know, Tony Robbins invented himself, I invented me, you invented you. But, the, but beyond that, like for a lot of people, it's kind of after all that, after all that success and fame and fortune and whatnot, it's all downhill at that point. I mean, you know a lot of guys in your sure. industry that are just, they're, that are gone. 
they're not even alive. Like, sure. Right. Uh, whatever it is, drugs or alcohol or whatever issues, overeating or just, you know, not taking care of themselves anymore or making bad financial issues or having a bunch of idiots in their lives. And here you are, mm. you know, you're 66, 66. Going to be 66. 66. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be 64. And that your, I don't want to say this, your work ethic from the past has never left you. Right. And here you are still reinventing yourself. And, but what's beautiful about what you do, and I think what I do as well, is it's not about you anymore. It's not about me anymore. It's about what we can do based on who we were and who we are and how, can we, how we can. And there's so much more, I don't know, for me, there's, I get so much more out of, you know, I love being in front of a camera and doing my shtick and everything. Right. I mean, I used, to do, I used to do stand up, sort of. Right. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you know? I love that honesty. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, stand up's a lot yeah. of balls, I, I though. Did, I did stuff. Like, my, my, uh, one of my writing partners would say to me, this uh, woman, um, Nancy, would say, you know, you're not always funny, but you're very comfortable up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Like, but like, most you know, people aren't, though. I'd come out and just go, yeah. You know, whatever. I yeah. didn't care. You right. know, what I, mean? I was like, oh, whatever. I have other jobs. I'll, I'm not, I don't really plan on being a comic. But the point I want to make is, you know, here we are at this point in our life, and we've, you know, we're st kind of starting all over again to a certain extent. And it's, and we're both successful because of who we were and what our intentions are now. Not only about, hey, you know, I like to have a nice house and some money and a decent car and all that kind of baloney. It's really about just being a good-natured human being who's looking out for other folks. And having that impact, and that and that feels as good as anything. I think you would agree, right? No, dude. I mean, like we were talking about it earlier. Like I, neither one of us. We really have. You know, we're in our sixties. We don't have to work anymore. We could live super comfortable and not really do anything mm -hmm. and just enjoy whatever. Retire. I've got buddies of mine who are all retired. I'm like me too. I'm never retiring. Yeah, I don't doesn't because it doesn't work for me. You mm -hmm. know, I want to make a difference. That's the biggest thing in my speaking with my program. Um, we just started filming a show. We're in two weeks into it. And it's called Change or Die. It tell, will, tell me about that. Change yeah. or Die is, I, well, first let me reference, the resurrection of Jake the Snake is where it really kind of started with me. And uh, taking Jake from being booze, pills, coke, and crack. If you've never seen the resurrection of Jake the Snake, go to Amazon Prime and watch it. It's... It's dark because it's about uh, addiction, mm. but it'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. Most of all, it'll inspire you because when you see Jake Roberts do his change, and you'd mentioned earlier in the, that we have a new podcast out called DDP Snake Pit. And in the first episode, a lot of people know what I did for Jake in Resurrection, but they don't know why. Mm. And I take them on that journey of why I did what I did for Jake, because I don't have this life without Dusty Rhodes and Jake Roberts being in my life. Mm. They were my mentors, my brothers, my closest friends, and he gave me a gift of knowledge, and I've always wanted to repay him. Well, today, you know, when you see Jake in the beginning of that documentary, and you see him at the end, and when you see him today, which is eight years later, mm. like I thought when I left filming Resurrection, Jake the Snake, and this leads into Change or Die, because this is the predecessor to it. Um, my business partner, Steve Yu, who's a storytelling genius, said, so what do you think? I said, honestly, I don't think I'll ever be able to have a serious conversation with my one of my best friends. He's just... He's got so much fog on his brain from the booze and the pills and the coke and the crack. Mm. That, I didn't realize that that fog can clear. It takes years. Yeah. But in the last couple of years, like last five years, like Jake and I, like that's why eventually he was like, dude, we have to do a podcast. We have to do it. I go, I don't want to do it. He goes, yeah, right. I want you to do it with me. Cool. Like, it's hard for me to say no to Jake right. because of all the things that he's done for me and I've done for him. Right. So it's a play back and forth. So knowing what happened with Jake and my one of my best friends, Scott Hall, who I was telling you about just recently, is gone now. But, you know, there was mm. 10 years that he wouldn't have had if he didn't come in to that house. And I call it my, I call that house that I own my accountability crib. And I moved five new people in there. And one of them is a wrestler, his name's Buff Bagwell. And I, I get so many different DMs or 
you know, YouTubes or Facebooks, you know, comments like it was people were all saying, please help Scott when I was with Jake. And eventually Scott came in too. Mm. They both got sober in the same year and they both went in the Hall of Fame the <laughs> next year. And these two guys, mm, yeah. they didn't, they didn't burn the bridges. They nuked the bridges. <laughs> so to get them to be where they are, and now here's Buff coming in, Buff Bagwell is coming into his house. And my whole thing is when anyone who comes in here, you let me drive. Because you're driving, sucks. Right. So right. let me drive, we're caught between me and Steve and our team, we're kind of proven, just let us drive. So Buff's in there, a guy named Butterbean. Butterbean's a famous fighter. Oh, I know Butterbean very well. Great. I know, yeah. Great. Watch got, Butterbean's career, sure. Great He's human in being. there right now. With he's you. in my house right now. No kidding. And when he walks in, bro, he's got the crutches, and it's as far as Butterbean can stand up. Now, how I get to work out with Butterbean like this? So, mm. what we've been working on is trying to straighten him up first and strengthen and straighten and strengthen and straighten. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where it's gone the, the first two weeks. And then there's a woman named Mildred and she's 67, 100 plus pounds overweight and you know, got a, kind of a little hunch on her back when she's walking. Mildred, stand up. No, no, up, stand up. Throw your shoulders back, mm -hmm. you know. And then I've got a girl named Cece. She's like 33 and I've never seen a woman carry 330 the way she does. She's one of the plus size models. Right. Beautiful woman. Uh, she, you know, she really wants to get down to. She's the one I'm not worried about changing or dying. Mildred, I am. Mm. Peter Butterbean, I am. Mm -hmm. Buff, I definitely am. Mm. And then there's a kid who can't, comes in, and this is how this happens. It's kind of this God's work. This is what I, I, I go to God a lot of different times, and I get a text from one of my buddies, and he says, "D, I'm going to buy this kid." your DDP yoga program. I'm gonna get him the app. Will you give me a couple of, like just say something inspiring to him that he can do it or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I look at this kid and he's a big kid. And I had one more spot left and I hadn't given it out yet. And I said, well, I'm not gonna do that right now, Jerry, because I called him up. I said, I'm not gonna do that right now, but what I'll do, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give my team this, this information and if he fills out the qualifications, meaning that he's willing to let me drive mm -hmm. and my team drive, mm -hmm. then yeah, may, might have something better for him. So bottom line is he came in and his kid's never left home. Oh. He's, he's 21, gonna be 22 in a week after he gets in the house. And now we measurements, weigh you, we do everything because we wanna show the transformations of people who are watching at home. And he thinks he's 486 pounds and he thinks he's 486, he thinks he's 486 pounds. He's super excited because he's lost like 20 pounds or 15 pounds. Mm. And I said, okay, get on the scale. And I got a talking scale because they can't see the scale. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it talks and 513 pounds and he's five foot five. Oh. Oh. All he does is put his head down and start crying. Mm. Like everybody gets choked up, you know? And this kid is, in the last two weeks, has never worked, ever. But he is now. And he's inspiring the other people in the house. Like I know if he don't change his life, he ain't got much future. No, he doesn't. You know, man. Mildred, I want her to live till she's in her 80s and 90s maybe. You know, and Butterbean, I want him to straighten up and be able to, you know, to be able to have a life physically because he was so amazing in the ring, mm -hmm. you know. And then, of course, Buff, you know, he, he's getting better, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a long road to hoe and we'll see what we can do. So, so kind of finish up a little bit. And then I want, to, want you to talk about a couple other things that you're, you're also working on now. This kid, Taylor. Right. How long have you had him? Been 12 days right now. 12 days. 12 days, yeah. And what do, you, what do you give him? You give him a year? How long? How much time do you nope, work nope. with him? What we're going to do is we're going to work with him for three months. And like I was saying, it's, it's kind of like Biggest Loser with the weight thing, but not because mm. we're not beating up anybody. Right. My workout doesn't do that. No. Um, apprentice in the way they had challenges. So that each challenge, like the first week's challenge was, what's your why? 
Like, I want to know what your why is. And yeah. each one of them, we're going to have to do it and make a video. They Like, I have a whole production company. Right. And that's the beauty of our company. We're all inclusive. And then we're going to have them start cooking. Like, my, that's so funny. My daughter, Brittany, is an amazing cook, right? She's a chef. And uh, so we first feed them, like, broccoli, nothing else you know mm. chicken nothing on it like she, it was killing her to serve these meals for the first two days because we wanted people to be like what we gotta eat like this because that's how people think they have to eat right if they're going to be <laughs> but they don't they man. don't right. like on my on my app dude not only do i have over 300 workouts you know bringing over 300 Motivational Mondays every Monday. Dang. Every Friday is another Facebook Friday where I take something. I tell people all the time, don't listen to anything I say on my program. Just go on Facebook, DDP Yoga, one word. Read what people write. There's a, it started with a couple buddies who started it. Then it went to 500 people to 1,000. Now there's 70,000 people all helping each other. Oh. So I take their stories and every Friday I talk about them. Mm. And then there's the cooking shows every Wednesday. And Brittany does most of them now, but I've done them with right. multiple people. But the food is completely healthy. And people want to go, how do you eat gluten-free and dairy-free and mm. non-GMO and organic? Well, I show you. And I show you because the food, the food, the food. Food. And one, and one Jack, the, Jack Elaine said, you know, you are what you eat, man. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? I mean, exercise gives your body the ability to function in this world and be able to do things maybe you never thought you could do. But the food, that's your medicine. The I food. Mean, the food is what keeps the weight down. It's what, you know, that's all everything on the inside. It makes you feel better. Yes. Like you don't realize that. Exactly right. Like you yeah. have to take accountability for what you're putting in your mouth yeah. if you want to know why you feel that way. Yeah. And yeah. you have, with Power Life, you have... The protein, I'm going to call them out right here. This has not been talked about. I would like you to sponsor, like give us, we'll, we'll pull your stuff over and I will make the shakes with your stuff if you'll send them to us. Well, dude, not to make this about a power life No, I'm, this is, this is but not. I can tell you, you know, when I got sick in 2017, I mean, I was down 25 pounds, couldn't walk, couldn't drive, couldn't work out, forget about working out. And, you know, I mean, uh, there's this thing called sarcopenia. It happens to guys and gals in our, our age. Right. Getting muscle back is a bear. You don't sure. see Jack's 90-year-olds. It just isn't possible. <laughs> right, you right. know what I mean? But we came up with a formula for me, basically, you know, how to get my weight back on. Because, look, I'm no wheat, no soy, no corn, no dairy. I'm vegan. I've been vegan for a, one year this month. And so it, it's been life-changing. There's a formula called Foundation 4, magnesium and sun fiber and two servings of vegetables and, and you know, all, all the stuff that really is going to help. Yeah. No wonder I was all six ways screwed up, you know what sure. I mean? And I had a lot of stress, you mm. know what I mean? And I was just one stressed out guy. So these things were custom made for me and, and now it's blowing up. I mean, to the point where we can actually have these kind of conversations with folks like you. I mean, it's been really, it's been really cool. One last question. Wait, will you do that? Will you send me your stuff? For yeah, these yeah I'll you, put you're it leaving with it here today, brother. <laughs> well, we got a big old bag and we even got a hat for you. If you oh, that's so, awesome. Um, uh, talk a little bit about anything else you want to talk about, like well, your podcast. Or uh, well, the podcast is really fun because Jake is is so colorful and he has so many amazing stories. If you're not a wrestling fan, you know, not just chance you won't really click into it. But even we do have people come on because, like, the resurrection of Jake the Snake, the documentary. There's, it's about three wrestlers, but it's not about wrestling at all. It's about you life. Know? Yeah, it's about yeah. life. life. Uh, and then we did another documentary. It's right there. You can see it. Pull up Resurrection. You'll see Relentless, which is my documentary for me blowing my back out to where we are today and how mm. we, you know, it, every entrepreneur should watch it because you see the up and you see the down. Mm. And you know that <laughs> there's a lot of mistakes get made along the way. They, You cannot give up. You have to be relentless with what you believe in. So that's something else. And the thing that I'm having the most fun with right now, mm. it's, let me just say that it took eight years in professional wrestling for, to be an overnight success. Yeah. It took me eight years uh, for DDP Yoga to, to kick wow. off. And wow. we talked about this earlier about the first time I ever saw you was in 2003. And then your thing blows up in 2010. Yep. Right, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I saw So you, you were then. back in the old Power 90 days. You're yes. checking me out. Yes, I That's saw. Cool. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah, you said, hey, you know, the Diamond Dallas 
Page knew who I was. <laughs> it was the guy who was doing some filming with us goes, he knew what I was trying to do, and he goes, have you heard of Tony Horton? I go, no, I haven't. He goes, let me show you something. This is something we just, it was one of the guys who shot with you or something. Oh, And they wow. had footage that was no one had seen yet. Oh. So they, we were supposed to come together. But um, it took eight years, like I said, to be for DDP Yoga to take off. Mm. It took seven years for a show that right now is on as a Netflix original. It debuted a week and a half ago. It's called The Guardians of Justice. And one of my very good friends, Adi Shankar, is the creator of it. And Adi's done a bunch of stuff here in Hollywood. And I was out here doing the acting thing from 2002 to 2011. And I just knew that no one was ever gonna believe in me and give me that role that could make my career mm. because I was in my 40s, 47, 48, 49, 50. And I kept doing it. I kept acting and I kept working my craft. Mm. But I said, I'm going to do this from Atlanta because that's where my family's at. That's where my business partner Steve Hughes at. I'm going to blow this company up. And it, we took off 10 years ago this May. And along the way, I kept taking the acting gigs. But along about seven years ago, Adi sent me a script. And he's like, listen, I've got this script. We're going to shoot. There's going to be shorts for YouTube. That's how it started. Uh, and he goes, pick whatever you want. And I picked the role and he was like, uh, you want to be who? My master. I go, yeah. He goes, you don't want to be Nighthawk? Now, this is a satire. Guardians of Justice is a a superhero satire. And if you don't get the satire part, you're going to go like, what the f is this? Okay. <laughs> it's But it's a satire. And then it... It turned into a live action meets like the fight scenes are like you're living in a video game. Wow. Like you are in the video game. Uh, there's eight different types of 2D animation, 3D animation, and claymation all work through this storyline that moves wow. so quickly. Yo, know, sometimes you have to go back and watch it again. I just want to say this has been an absolute thrill, dude. You are you are the real deal. You're as, as authentic as it gets. And I'm not going to lie to you. You know, when I heard that I'd be talking to you today, I thought, I don't think this is going to go well, man. <laughs> I don't really. I just, I was afraid of you, dude, a little bit. Because you're, you know, you're a badass. And, you're, you know, you've, you've done quite a bit. And I've, you know, I've done a few things, too. But, you know, whenever you meet two people like us in our kind of worlds, sometimes they clash. Or they do this. Yeah, they do that. That's like and this. That's, and that's what happened. Today. Absolutely, I think so brother. Anyway, man. Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. I had a great I, I, time. Sean and I are going to hang out with you, you and Paige, a little yes. bit. That'll be fun. Have some Absolutely. dinner. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And and I'm looking forward to the Christmas party. That's for sure. Oh, dude, you're gonna love that party. <laughs> sure. So let's let's. How can people find you to find? Basically, all of it. What are the? Okay, so uh, if you're a Twitter guy uh, or girl, uh, guys, I me, mean, I'm from Jersey. Everybody's a guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, and guys. it saves all the all the other things. Your guys. Stuff. That's my thing for everybody. Friends. <laughs> Friends. Yes. Uh, but uh, if you're on Twitter at real DDP, at DDP Yoga. If you're Instagram, at Diamond Dallas page, at DDP Yoga. Facebook for my athlete page, Diamond Dallas page. And of course, DDP Yoga. But the, the site I really want you to go to, and we talked about it briefly, um, DDP Yoga, one word, is not my site. It's a member site. And when you see how much people care, you're never gonna believe what, I have these six pictures that you take. You're never gonna believe that women would show themselves 100 plus pounds overweight in, in some some of them next to you know nothing and guys who are hundreds of pounds overweight mm. and this program is not about a weight loss it just happens to be because everybody's about weight loss and anybody can do it at any level but what happens is the people help each other mm. and they you know they 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 put they don't put like Hey, kick up off the great work. They put paragraphs. And you can't get people to write like that unless it's really authentic. Unless it's doing something. You know, unless it's really And where do they real. go? Where do they find it? What is it? If they just go to Facebook, one word, DDP Yoga, you can ask anybody, anywhere, anytime, anything on that page. And they're they're just people who do the program. Right. You know, so and you know, because you had guys, your people that you had behind you. They believe because it works. Like, this works. That's why we're sharing it with you. Right. And that, that's what my people are about. Ain't no gimmicks, no gadgets, nothing silly. Just honest, authentic, 
a uh, little bit of work ethic mixed in, and, and that's what you've been able to do with me, too. So. Hey, brother. Appreciate you having me, man. Glad Great you're here, time. Man. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thank you, everybody. Diamond, Dallas Page, you're See welcome. Ya. Bang! Thank you so much for watching this episode of Power Up with me, Tony Horton. Now, if you want to see more great episodes with amazing guests like Diamond Dallas Page, click right over there. This is the first swing in 28 years. <laughs> Run for your lives. I was so scared. I was like, man, I don't want to have, be stuck on the side of the road, car broken, are we going to get kidnapped?